you know, we had the beautiful wedding, we had the good jobs, we had the new house, the new cars, and the next natural step was to have a family. And when that time came for us, we, um, we hit difficulty. And I was to go on medications to get pregnant if that was even gonna be a possibility. And so it was uh, kind of at that point, that would have been the catalyst that I just, something shifted in me. And I thought, if I'm not here to be a mom, then what am I here for? And uh, I thought, I'm here for me. I'm just gonna enjoy life. And to me, what enjoying life meant was partying and whatever felt good. If it feels good, do it mentality. And so that really was the catalyst for destruction. You lost hope. Yeah. That possibility of being childless robbed you of hope for your future. Yeah. So what did you choose? What, and the Bible talks about the pleasures of sin for a season. Yeah, I was a perfect candidate. I fit that bill pretty perfectly. Um, for me, I chose a whole other life aside from my husband and my, my home life and that perfect job, perfect house life. And I was coping with this, this not being able to have a baby by using drugs and alcohol. And so that meant leaving every weekend or, and, and then into that became more during, during the week too. Um, and using drugs and alcohol. Did you have a job at that time? Yeah, I had I a full-time. you're an time. interior decorator. Yeah, I had my own business as an interior decorator and managed a store as well, so. You were doing all of this at the same time. I was what you would call a functioning addict. I didn't know that was even a term before I went into the program, um, but when I sat across that desk in my interview to get into Teen Challenge, um, Heather said, you're a functioning addict. So I, which is difficult too as a functioning addict because I didn't think I had a problem because everything was still there. I still had my nice clothes to put on or my nice car to get into. So it's hard to, in that case to, to say, I, I think I have a problem here. Such a powerful deception. Yeah. And the denial. Yeah. Um, your husband became aware that. Yes, the Bible were... talks about everything gets brought to light and I didn't really know that at the time. And it, he became aware. God is so good in the fact that he didn't let me stay in that, that season for too long. It was about probably eight months and it hit hard and it hit fast. And those addictions at that point were cocaine? Cocaine alcohol. and alcohol. Really for me, I didn't even think I had the alcohol problem. I love to drink beer, but I can guarantee you I never had cocaine without a beer in my hand. So now I, I say alcohol was an issue for me. Well, it was really wonderful to hear from Paul in the green room that when he be, risked expressing his concerns to your parents, who didn't have any idea what yeah. was going on here, he discovered that they had started going to church seven months or so before. Yeah. There's so much evidence of God going ahead of this crisis. I'm so glad you said that, Myra. Yeah, he um, discovered that my parents, so I was sharing with you earlier, I went to Pioneer Girls. So I met the Lord when I was 12, and I, I didn't really know what that looked like. I just knew that there was a God. And so I went to this Pioneer Girls through a church in Orangeville, and that church, my parents didn't go to, but years later, that was the church that seven months before I had to enter Teen Challenge that they decided they, um, they were like, why am I here on earth? Like, what am I here for? And they gave their lives to the Lord and started attending that church. And I want to say too, that they definitely would have been praying for my sister and myself. And I think you know, a even before they knew you were in trouble, before they knew this was sure. happening. And this was how God answered their prayer was that really the rug was swept out from underneath them. And this scandal of my life was exposed <coughs> and, you know, the best things came out of it. But that was God's way of answering their prayer. And I think as new Christians, they could have said what this we're praying like, is this really a God that answers prayer? But this is what God used and good fruit is coming out of it now. And their pastor is the one who recommended Teen Challenge. Yeah. Aurora, the women's yeah. center. We we're sitting there in, in his office because Paul had went, my husband went and met with him. And um, I didn't want to go and meet the pastor. I thought he probably knows these ugly things about me. Well, I thought Paul's already gone and talked to him. So I'm going to go and just kind of straighten that out, right? Because we <laughs> were not in a, a good place, obviously, my husband and I. 
And actually God is so graceful. He, he just softened me for that meeting. And um, you tell me in your yeah. written testimony that God spoke to you, not in this interview with the pastor, but when you had to do the intake interview yeah. At Teen Challenge, he just deposited in, in, in right into me. So I knew I needed an act of God to get out of what I was doing. And so when I was offered help, I, I chose. I said, "Let's go with the faith option here." And then, um, yeah, I was sitting in the interview, and I asked, "Like, how long is the program?" And it's a long interview. It's like an hour. And yeah, I said, "God just put it right in me. You're going to do this." And just for those who don't know, <clears throat> it's one year. Minimum. Minimum. It's <laughs> residential, which means you are yeah. in there. Yeah, it's uh, hard. You stay. Yeah, so, and I didn't know that until I was in my interview, and that's why that was so important to me that God spoke to me, because I said, well, how does it work? Do I, like, live here for three months, and then it's an outpatient care? But no, you're living in the center with however many women are there at the time, you know, on average, maybe 17, 20 women with you. And uh, it's a Christ-centered program. So Bible study, it is. God at the center is very much a part of that. Was it, were, you, yeah. were you open to that? I was open. I was open. And it could be weird when you first go in because it is so Christ-centered. But I think it took a little bit. I uh, needed to get weird to get healed, you know? <laughs> oh, and I just, I just look at where you are today. Uh, you say your passion is studying the Old Testament. I love you that. are leading a Bible study yeah. at your church. Yeah, what's really cool um, to me is that what turned me off of God when I was 12 and so was I was studying the Bible on my own because my parents weren't believers and I was in the Old Testament because I, I was doing nightly devotions by myself, but I kept reading about fearing God and this angry God and so I kind of put God on the back burner and it's interesting because now being properly discipled through Teat Challenge, I understand God and I understand the qualities of God and that Old Testament God is not a scary mean God and so this is my passion is Old Testament stories and Old Testament studies so I'm going to um, have the opportunity this summer to lead a study in Deuteronomy for my women's uh, group at church and I'm so excited about that. I hope you don't mind me going here Jenny but uh, another wonderful reality of this investment of time and opening your heart yeah. to God and the entrance of his word, which is so healing and cleansing, yeah. God got to things in your heart and journey that probably contributed to your derailment and you didn't even know it. Yeah. All the way back to childhood. Yeah, yeah. Wounds were healed. Wounds were healed. And I didn't know I had wounds. I knew I was acting in ways that weren't edifying would be the word I know now, but they weren't good. And I didn't know I was, um, we kind of touched on it earlier, I was sexually abused as a child. And I mean, we dealt with that in my family as the best way that we thought. And then we moved on, but it was without God, without releasing forgiveness mm -hmm. to that person, without um, the word of God, as you'd said, I hadn't healed. So I had moved on. So there were open wounds that were deep within me and I didn't know. And so I really received a lot of healing and out of that came huge anger issues and a lot of hurt, a lot of bondage um, of just being self-seeking and self-focused and I didn't know. And so that was really a lot of healing that took place through the program. The drugs and alcohol are just the symptoms. Oh, there's so much more to tell. Two weeks after you graduated from the program, what happened? Um, two weeks after I graduated from the program, I had, a, uh, I got pregnant. <laughs> I didn't have her yet. <laughs> no. I, I got pregnant. And what's so interesting, so I had talked a little bit at the beginning of this interview that I ha wasn't able to have children. Into my program, I don't think I told you this yet, but into the, at the beginning of the program, my body actually started showing signs that I'd be able to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so I was taking passes. At the end of the program, you get a uh, weekend pass for the last three months. And it would have been ideal time to have a baby. And I, I felt God say, no, if you get pregnant, you're not going to stay on the course. I have you to complete this program. Okay, well, so. let's uh, have a picture, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we looking at? Your husband, Paul, yeah. and eight months old last week? Yes, Azaria Brooke. 
What an, an interesting name, chosen very purposefully for its meaning. Yeah. What yeah. does her name mean? Her name means God has helped.